please welcome the president of Teachers College, Tom Bailey. Now, how many of you have asked Alexa to give the weather forecast or order dinner? And how many of you have been disturbed because Amazon seems to know more about you than you really would like them to like it to know? Or how many of you have been frustrated by Siri who gives you the wrong directions? Now, I'm sure most of you have had positive uh, experiences with this, but um, this is what, this is an evidence of, of what artificial intelligence is doing. But more technically speaking, this is You'll get this. You need to take a rest before I get into this. Highly adaptive machine learning software running nonstop algorithms that track, predict, and indeed try to shape our behavior. Today, at this moment, artificial intelligence is at work in education. Now, we suspect that we're moving towards a future where machines could perform many new kinds of tasks in our school systems. But if we've learned anything about technology over the past 25 years, it is that we can seldom foresee all the ways it will change our lives for the better and perhaps for the worse. And if we've learned anything from the most recent history of education technology, it's that there's no substitution for rigorous research in developing, testing, and assessing new products for effectiveness in enhancing and advancing learning. We also know that the old fantasy of simply replacing teachers with machines and computers has consistently failed. So I think it would be wise for us not to take artificial intelligence and education to be about that. That's why it's so important to have education researchers at the table with technologists, policymakers, and leaders from NGOs and the tech world, all collaborating to find answers to the same questions. How can AI enhance teaching and learning? Is it a tool to optimize our current educational paradigm or create entirely new ones? What should parents and teachers, and really all of us, worry less about? And what should we mo worry more about? Ultimately, what is AI good for? Now, this con conference is actually very much in sync with TC's history in education technology. Long before the advent of computers, John Dewey and the other TC giants in psychology and education held that people learn by making sense, often in the most tactile, at the most tactile level of their environment, and that the processes involved could be measured, better understood, and ultimately enhanced. Starting with the work of TC education psychologist Ernest Roscoff, whose mathemogenics research directly influenced the creation of virtual learning environments and efforts to enhance learning in industrial systems. TC researchers and alumni have been leaders in fields such as grounded cognition, the maker movement, gamification, and, the, and, the, and, and le learning partnerships between individuals, robots, and other technologies. I'm excited and proud to have teacher Teachers College hosting this conference, which I believe can serve as the foundation for developing the research base, the standards and safeguards, and innovations that will help ensure that AI become a force for good in education. And I'm also grateful that the World Innovation Summit for Education, appropriately named WISE, and UNESCO have joined us as supporters and partners in this endeavor. In a moment, we'll hear from WISE CEO Stavros Yanuka, who will also moderate our first panel. Right now, it's my pleasure to introduce the Director of Policies and Lifelong Learning Systems at UNESCO, Barun Shakrun. Is Barun Shakrun is an, is an engineer with a doctorate in education sciences. Much of his most recent work focuses on global trends in reforming education and training systems and, a, and uh, towards a global agenda for skills development and lifelong learning in the context of the UN's 2030 Sustainable Development Agenda. Please welcome Dr. Borum Chakrum. Let me uh, contribute to setting a bit the meeting discussion in, in a context, at least from a global perspective, how we see it. This year, UNESCO organized several events and, and activities uh, around AI in education. 
we had two major global events in Paris and in Beijing, which culminated in a, what we call the Beijing Consensus, which is a unique internationally agreed framework on AI in education. We saw exciting and concrete demonstration of platforms providing personalized assistance, lessons and feedback to students, software helping adults with low skill uh, literacy to navigate the written and uh, word with more confidence. We have seen real-time feedback, virtual tutoring and more. In short, the use of AI in education is booming domain with the potential to profoundly alter every aspect of the teaching and learning processes. But it is a revolution that policymakers and teachers are struggling to come to grips with. Everywhere questions are asked, how will artificial intelligence affect the future of work? Will machine equipped with artificial intelligence render human race redundant? Is the teaching profession as we know it about to end? We were happy to define digital skills and start mainstreaming them into curricula. Now, what are AI skills? Ministers we meet are asking twin questions. How and where we start? To put more, there, more element for the context, let's, let's, let's recall some of the key figures that our Institute for Statistics and other organizations are uh, published recently. Nearly 200 million of the world's adolescents aged 12 to 17 remain out of school, many of whom have never started or completed primary education. 617 million children and adolescents are not achieving minimum proficiency levels in reading and mathematics after several years in school. 750 million adults lack basic literacy skills, majority of them of whom are women. By 2030, an estimated 825 million children are expected to leave school without basic secondary level. Across the globe, 500 million youth are employed, underemployed or working in insecure jobs, often in the informal sector, and 225 million are not in employment, education and training. Less than a third of all teachers across OECD Talis countries believe that teaching is a valid profession in the society. In the different events and meetings that we have had uh, with different uh, stakeholders, I have learned a lot and I, I wanted to share with you five key imperatives that I think are important for our discussion today. First, I believe that an, an overarching imperative is to put AI in education to action to accelerate the progress toward the achievement of SDG 4 goal, which is about equitable and inclusive quality education and lifelong learning for all. Basically, the latest advance in AI technology should open up new opportunities to tackle resistant issues and barriers in education in order to accelerate the achievement of the Education 2030. It's not less than offering quality and inclusive learning opportunities for all learners. The second is to consider teachers as the key actors in any innovation and invest in them. This means the shift from a supply to a demand-driven approaches. Often, we see initiatives that are driven by supply. Example, new fancy technologies or devices that are given to the schools or to learners or to teachers, rather than demand stemming from real issues in education, specifically in teaching and learning. The needs of teachers and learners, as well as the nature of the specific context, are not sufficiently taken into account in these uh, initiatives. We should go beyond the dominant model for organizing teacher work, which reduces the, the understanding of the complexity of teachers' work. This model is centered on the classrooms, but unfortunately it ignores roles and responsibilities of teachers in innovation, curriculum, development, col collaborative work with colleagues and within broader networks. Even if you consider the classroom, it is not sufficient to focus on teaching and underestimate the support to personal development, empathy and reflective capacities of uh, that teachers have to develop. Third, equity must remain an essential component of any national and global education agenda, including an AI in education agenda. A focus on ensuring the marginalized are not left behind. This also means that teachers are enabled to achieve the equity objectives. Fourth, we should recognize that ethics is central. AI in education should position ethics as its core. It is necessary to develop a regulatory framework that is agile enough not to discourage innovation, 
Today, we lack ethical framework for AI in education. This uh, includes privacy, protection of learners' records, and transparency of AI algorithms used for assessing, orienting, streaming, and certifying learners. Finally, we need a global cooperation to help countries understand how to take up innovation through AI in education. The global race for digitalization and artificial intelligence should not be just about global economic positioning. From our perspective, it should be about peer learning and knowledge sharing, for example, among teachers across board, among teach researchers across board, about capacity development, about regional and international initiatives that bring together different stakeholders. This should be a race for open knowledge, for universal access to learning. For policymakers, this should be policy learning than, rather than policy borrowing and lending. I hope that these are the messages that we will take forward in our discussion today. Thank you for your attention, and I wish you and wish us a successful meeting. Thank you. Um, I am Stavros Yanuka, the chief executive of WISE. From the vantage point of, of WISE, which is a global platform dedicated to understanding um, and enabling innovation in education uh, as a means of making quality education and lifelong learning for all, uh, a reality. Um, we've been struck over the years uh, by the following uh, observation. As we survey the impact of education technology, um, we see that it's transformed business, it's transformed education, it's transformed healthcare, um, it's even transforming our, our politics um, for better uh, or, or for worse, uh, some might argue. Um, but as we look at its impact on education, I think it's fair to say that uh, it's been marginal at best. Um, and the speculation that the reason uh, for this is that uh, we haven't yet invented the killer app for, uh, for education. Um, could AI be that killer app? Could it unlock the promise of personalized learning um, that frees up time for teachers to spend uh, doing what they do best, which is uh, attending to their uh, students on an individual uh, or small group uh, basis? Um, could it you know, help us schedule uh, our time better and free up, again, resources uh, away from administrative tasks uh, and more uh, oriented towards, uh, towards the classroom? Could it be the killer app? Or is this AI going to be just another uh, tech uh, hype designed to sell you know, expensive kit, but ultimately having very, very little impact on what really matters, which is the learning outcomes of students, uh, young and old, that we're hoping to, uh, to impact.